writing a Tinder document can be a complex task, requiring careful planning, organization, and attention to detail. A Tinder document is a formal request for proposals, RFB, or bids that outlines the scope of work, requirements, and expectations of a project. It is typically issued by a client or project owner to potential contractors who are interested in bidding on the project. In this article, we will provide a comprehensive guide on how to write a Tinder document. The executive summary is a brief overview of the entire Tinder document. It should provide a clear and concise introduction to the project, outlining the purpose, scope, and objectives. The executive summary should also highlight any key project deliverables and timelines. The purpose of the executive summary is to capture the reader's attention and provide an overview of the project. It should be no longer than one page, and should be written in plain language that is easy to understand. When writing the executive summary, it is important to be concise and to the point. The reader should be able to quickly understand what the project is about and why it is important. The executive summary should be written in a way that is engaging and interesting, without being too detailed. The introduction section should provide background information on the project. This may include the reasons why the project is necessary and its intended outcomes. The introduction should also outline the procurement process and the criteria that will be used to evaluate proposals. The purpose of the introduction is to provide context for the project and to explain why it is important. It should be no longer than two pages, and should be written in plain language that is easy to understand. When writing the introduction, it is important to provide enough background information to give the reader a clear understanding of the project. The reader should be able to understand the purpose of the project and why it is important. The introduction should also outline the procurement process and the evaluation criteria that will be used to evaluate proposals. The scope of work section should provide a detailed description of the work that needs to be completed. This may include a breakdown of the tasks involved, the expected timelines, and the expected outcomes. The scope of work should be clear and concise and should include any specific requirements that the client has. It should also include any technical specifications or standards that the work must meet. The purpose of the scope of work section is to provide a detailed description of the work that needs to be completed. It should be written in a way that is clear and easy to understand, and should provide enough detail to enable potential contractors to prepare a proposal. When writing the scope of work, it is important to be as specific as possible. The reader should be able to understand exactly what work needs to be completed, and what the expected outcomes are. The scope of work should also include any technical specifications or standards that the work must meet. The evaluation criteria section should outline the factors that will be used to evaluate proposals. This may include the proposed approach to the project, the cost of the proposal, the qualifications and experience of the contractor, and any other relevant factors. The purpose of the evaluation criteria section is to provide potential contractors with a clear understanding of the factors that will be used to evaluate their proposal. It should be written in a way that is objective and clearly defined. When writing the evaluation criteria, it is important to be clear and specific. The reader should be able to understand exactly what factors will be used to evaluate proposals, and how each factor will be weighted. The evaluation criteria should also be objective and fair, and should be based on the requirements of the project. The submission requirements section should outline the format and requirements for submitting a proposal. This may include the format of the proposal, the number of copies required, and any other specific requirements. It should also include the deadline for submitting proposals and any penalties for late submissions. The purpose of the submission requirements section is to provide potential contractors with clear instructions on how to submit their proposal. It should be written in a way that is easy to understand, and should provide enough detail to enable contractors to submit their proposal correctly. When writing the submission requirements, it is important to be specific about the format and requirements for submitting a proposal. The reader should be able to understand exactly what is required, and how to submit their proposal. The submission requirements should also be fair and reasonable, and should allow potential contractors enough time to prepare and submit their proposal. The project timeline section should provide a detailed timeline for the project, including all major milestones and deliverables. This may include the start date, the end date, 
and any key milestones along the way. The project timeline should also include any important deadlines or requirements that contractors need to be aware of. The purpose of the project timeline section is to provide potential contractors with a clear understanding of the timeline for the project. It should be written in a way that is easy to understand, and should provide enough detail to enable contractors to plan their work accordingly. When writing the project timeline, it is important to be specific about the dates and milestones for the project. The reader should be able to understand exactly when the project will start and end, and when key milestones and deliverables are due. The project timeline should also be realistic, and should take into account any potential delays or obstacles that may arise during the project. The budget section should provide a detailed breakdown of the costs associated with the project. This may include a breakdown of the cost for each stage of the project, as well as any other costs that may be associated with the project. The budget should also include any contingencies or allowances that have been built into the project. The purpose of the budget section is to provide potential contractors with a clear understanding of the costs associated with the project. It should be written in a way that is easy to understand, and should provide enough detail to enable contractors to prepare a detailed proposal. When writing the budget, it is important to be as specific as possible. The reader should be able to understand exactly what costs are associated with the project, and how much each stage of the project will cost. The budget should also be realistic, and should take into account any potential contingencies or allowances that may be necessary. The contract terms and conditions section should outline the specific terms and conditions that will be included in the contract. This may include payment terms, warranties, liability and insurance, termination clauses, and any other relevant terms and conditions. The purpose of the contract terms and conditions section is to provide potential contractors with a clear understanding of the specific terms and conditions that will be included in the contract. It should be written in a way that is easy to understand, and should provide enough detail to enable contractors to understand their rights and responsibilities under the contract. When writing the contract terms and conditions, it is important to be specific about the terms and conditions that will be included in the contract. The reader should be able to understand exactly what their rights and responsibilities are, and what the consequences will be if they do not meet their obligations. The contract terms and conditions should also be fair and reasonable, and should be based on industry standards. The selection process section should provide a detailed description of the selection process that will be used to select the successful contractor. This may include a breakdown of the evaluation criteria, the process for shortlisting potential contractors, and any other relevant information. The purpose of the selection process section is to provide potential contractors with a clear understanding of how the selection process will be carried out. It should be written in a way that is easy to understand, and should provide enough detail to enable contractors to prepare their proposal in a way that meets the evaluation criteria. When writing the selection process section, it is important to be specific about the evaluation criteria and the process for shortlisting potential contractors. The reader should be able to understand exactly how they will be evaluated, and what they need to do to meet the evaluation criteria. The selection process should also be fair and transparent, and should be based on objective criteria. The contact information section should provide contact information for the person or organization responsible for managing the tender process. This may include the name, title, and contact information for the person responsible for managing the tender process as well as any other relevant contact information. The purpose of the contact information section is to provide potential contractors with a way to contact the person or organization responsible for managing the tender process. It should be written in a way that is easy to understand, and should provide enough detail to enable contractors to contact the relevant person or organization if they have any questions or need further information. When writing the contact information section, it is important to provide accurate and up-to-date contact information. The reader should be able to contact the relevant person or organization easily if they have any questions or need further information. 